Hello everyone, welcome to our capstone presentation. We are Team General Dynamics Electric Boat and our project is the commercial off-the-shelf design of a digital and analog I.O. acquisition system. Our technical directors are Adam White, Art Viola, and Douglas Marshall. I am Gary Zhang and I'm the computer engineer in this project and I'm here today with my team member Jornel Medina who is the electrical engineer. Electric Boat has a distinguished history dating back to 1899 where the company was established to complete a vessel named Holland after its inventor and would become the first commissioned U.S. Navy submarine. Today, Electric Boat is a design yard and prime contractor for the Virginia class submarine program, which is the first major warship completely designed in a virtual environment. Alongside the Virginia class submarine program, Electric Boat is also currently engaged in the development of the Ohio Replacement or the Columbia class, which will provide strategic deterrence for the nation well into the remainder of this century. For this project, we will be investigating alternative technologies to the antiquated Versa Module Europa, otherwise known as VME Computer Bus Standard. We will be utilizing commercial off-the-shelf products as an approach to reduce cost and schedule while developing our prototype. This will allow for a rapid and agile system design at a fraction of the cost of a custom design product. With the industry's support declining for this standard, we hope to develop a prototype system that will rival this standard and utilize newer technologies to ensure the longevity of our new system. The VME computer bus standard was created in 1980 where it was originally developed by Motorola for its 68,000 microprocessor. What made the VME computer bus standard so revolutionary was that it was able to use its own signaling system. With its own signaling system, this would change how communication in industries like the military would be. The military would be heavily dependent on the standard for applications like command and control systems or any type of communication. Our technical accomplishments this semester include establishing top-level requirements and system-level requirements. Top-level requirements are specifications that will need to be met to achieve our best anticipated outcome and system level requirements are to describe constraints or functions of our system that can be categorized under each top level requirement. Jornel and I were able to establish a total of seven top level requirements with 32 system level requirements that will need to be met in our final product. We have also developed a bill of materials and a trade study. The bill of materials was created to ensure that we will remain within our budget and still select the best possible components for our system. The trade study was developed to compare advantages and disadvantages of each data acquisition system, as this system will be the baseline of our prototype. Jornel has also designed a couple system block diagrams that he will discuss later on in the presentation, and I've designed a GUI, which I will also discuss later on in this presentation. Our anticipated best outcome will be to design and implement commercial off-the-shelf hardware and software to construct a prototype to collect and analyze technical performance measurements. We will also identify and document these technical performance measurements, which will include variables like cost per unit and data acquisition speed. Lastly, to reach the ABO, we will have successfully developed a prototype system that will be an effective alternative to the VME computer bus standard. Next, I will go over the software aspect of our system. For our system to be able to communicate with the hardware, a command and status program will have to be written to allow us to obtain information from the selected data acquisition systems and be able to implement this data into our GUI. Also, software will need to be written on the test equipment to provide test vectors ensuring all of our I.O. demonstrations are working as expected. A GUI was created to ensure that a user can interact with our system to test all of the features. I was able to implement each I.O. demonstration into my GUI with basic buttons. I utilized Visual Studio and I created my code in Visual Basic. Because we have not yet developed any physical hardware yet, the GUI is still missing the data implementation from our system. I've also developed pseudocode for each button on my GUI to ensure we know what each button should do once the GUI is completed. My remaining technical challenges to reach the ABO will be to develop a software design document which will provide guidance to anyone that will be looking at any of the software. As we build our system, technical performance metrics will be documented. I will also need to finish implementing any revisions that will need to be made to my GUI as we build the system. After implementing all of this code, I will have to debug everything to ensure that my code is working properly. And lastly, I will integrate the actual data from our prototype system into my GUI. Next, Jornel will go over the hardware aspect of our project. For the hardware aspect of this system, 
We have to ensure that computing technologies could transmit and receive data to user workstation. This is where the user can utilize their laptop and view a GUI that provides the collected data and current status of the I.O. applications. The two competing technologies that are under test are the Raspberry Pi 4 and the USB 6000. The USB 6000 will utilize a next unit of computing, also known as the NUC, to transmit and receive data. Starting from the Raspberry Pi 4, a new SD card is inserted to the Pi and it will contain the embedded software that will allow it to perform the I.O. application test. A camera module and a USB speaker are connected directly to the Raspberry Pi USB ports, which will be used for these applications. The 40-pin GPIO will be utilized to transmit and receive data to and from the Raspberry Pi. The GPIO breakout is a convenient component as it allows us to connect the I.O. applications to the Pi with ease. As the Raspberry Pi is not capable of analog inputs, an analog to digital circuit will have to be fabricated to be compatible with certain I.O. applications that will be tested. Our other competing technology, the USB 6000, is capable of analog and digital I.O. and all the data collected will be sent to the NUC. The NUC will utilize its own embedded software that is different from the Raspberry Pis. The USB 6000 will also utilize same peripherals as of those from the Raspberry Pi 4. Our competing technologies will both be connected to an Ethernet switch where all the data will be received by the laptop and viewed on the GUI. In our institution, we, also, we have also implemented a power strip to supply power for our system and I.O. applications. All the I.O. applications will be compatible with both competing technologies. Each application will be built on their own perf boards where competing technologies will be able to connect and be tested. From here, we will be able to uh, take technical performance measurements to compare the following technologies and see where the two data acquisition units were are efficient enough to perform the task within the I.O. applications. The sex work detector is one of the three I.O. applications that is utilized to test our competing technologies. It utilizes an ultrasonic sensor that measures the distance of an object or a person by emitting ultrasonic sound waves and converts a reflected sound into electrical signal. If an object or a person happens to be detected within the 6 foot range, the camera on either one of the competing technologies under test will turn on showing a live feed of the object or person on the GUI. The unit under test will also output a signal to the corresponding LED to turn on. In this instance, being within 6 feet will turn on the green LED. If the object or person happened to fall in within the 4 foot range, the yellow LED would turn on. And if the person or object happened to fall in within the 2 feet range, the red LED will turn on and also the USB speaker will emit a sound in order to basically tell the person or object to back away. The second I.O. application is a desk lamp where a passive infrared sensor, also known as a PIR, will detect motion that occurs within its view. This allows the system to input a signal into the unit under test to turn the light on when somebody is sitting at the desk. A photoresistor is utilized to detect whether the light is on or off to convert the alternating current coming from the photoresistor. A rectifier is used to convert it into a direct current, while the regulator will allow us to achieve a desired voltage input to the unit under test. If the photoresistor detects the light is still on while no one is at the desk, the AND gate is utilized to take these inputs to set a time for how long the lamp is, will remain on. A momentary push button can also turn on the lamp manually. The relay will provide automated control of the receptacle depending on the outputted signal that is sent from the unit under test. The last I.O. application will simply consist of a function generator that will send a signal at a set frequency and voltage level where the signal will be visually displayed on a GUI on the user laptop. To input the signal to our USB 6000, the test leads can be directly connected as the competing technology allows analog inputs. However, for the Raspberry Pi, an analog to digital circuit will be utilized in order to input the signal to the Pi. The remaining hardware technical challenges involve developing a hardware design document that includes instructions for operating the system and descriptions of the hardware features and components. A technical performance measurements document 
will be created as it verifies how well the system is satisfying its requirements or meeting its goals. The system schematics must be designed along with the analog to digital PCB, which will be fabricated to be used once the hardware is assembled based on our system design. Utilizing commercial off-the-shelf products will reduce the cost and scheduling for designing systems as it eliminates the need for costly, time-consuming government-sponsored research and development. The data that is collected can be benefit General Dynamics Electric Boat as it can be used in the future to reduce expenses on cost of labor and research. To achieve our best anticipated outcomes, there are still key technical accomplishments that need to be achieved. We will document the technical performance metrics to verify that our system meets the TLRs and SLRs. Development of our prototype system based on our system design will also occur. We will also troubleshoot any hardware issues along with debugging any software issues within the system. Both competing technologies will also require their own embedded software to perform testing with the IO applications. This will coincide with the integration of data being collected from the system to then be presented into the GUI. A test and readiness review will, also, will be conducted to show the system is ready to be reviewed and the procedures that are used to test the system are complete. This ensures that all the testing resources are established before any formal testing begins. Finally, the test completion review will showcase the completed data from the test execution. This phase will also report whether system defects have reached closure or announce if there are any current defects that need attention prior to completion of this project. With that, we would like to thank the following people for their support in our project. We want to recognize our technical directors, our Viola, Adam White, and Douglas Marshall, who have contributed their time and knowledge to assist us along the development of our prototype. We would also like to thank our Capstone Pro Program Director, Dr. Harif Sunak, for his guidance and support to steer us in the direction of accomplishing our anticipated best outcomes. Thank you.